Because, like, at the end of the day, I don't give a fuck if you're from here or not. I don't care if you're white or black or gay or straight or any of that shit. I don't care. My main question about you, if you're an artist or you're a creator in this area, are you positively contributing to this culture, yes or no? That was street artist Ricky Rat. Welcome to Storied San Francisco. I'm your host, Jeff Hunt. In this episode, Ricky picks up where he left off in part one, with his return to the city after college. He takes us through some office and odd jobs he had leading up to the pandemic, when he started taking his cartoon art back onto the streets. It's a colorful story of lighthearted rivalries. Ricky ends the episode with his hopes for the future of San Francisco. Quick announcement. This Sunday, I'll be the guest on a new show called Real City Ambassadors. It'll be live, which will be interesting. Join me and host Rodrigo Duran at noon Sunday on Facebook or YouTube. Follow Real City Ambassadors for more info. Here's Ricky. I mean, the city's fucking always been changing, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the mission before was Latina was like Roman Catholic immigrants, like Portuguese and Italians and all those Irish, dudes, you know? Yeah. yeah, right. Like same with the sunset. Before it was Asian, it was all, you know, Irish and, you know, it's, it's always changing and it doesn't grow, so you just got to wipe it, you know, essentially. Right. Um, which is, it is what it is, I guess. It's capitalism. Yeah. But like, you know, like the SFRDA, like San Francisco Redevelopment Agency, they've been like historically knocking down the Western edition since like the 50s, you yeah. know what I mean? Like they've just been making it smaller and smaller and smaller and, yeah. you know. And saying that it's for everyone's good. Right, you know, right. But it's not, not everyone. Not at all. You know, like the San Francisco used to have a really thriving and like, you know, profitable like black community. And, you know, they just slowly but surely just were like, oh, no, we need to get rid of this. You know, yeah. they had a whole fucking Filipino town here. You know, they yep. got rid of that. You know, it's, it's insane. It's, that's the funny thing about San Francisco, though. You know, it's like that whole like liberal stigma. It's like, oh, we're open minded. We're not racist. But it's like, bro, we're. We just don't want to admit it. Right. <laughs> we are. Yeah, it's almost the worst kind of racism because it says it's not racist. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like at least it's like the the guy who is racist will like at least like be very clear with it. Right. And you know where you stand. Right. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? But yeah, it's just fucking. It's a weird city. It's a weird place. <laughs> so tech wasn't for you. Didn't like. You're it. Like, sorry, tech bro, I'm out. I didn't like it. Like I met some cool people through it. And, like it was chill. Everyone's human. You know what I mean? But like yeah. just for me personally, like I don't get off at fucking getting yellow sparks. I don't get off like I don't. What the fuck? Like I just want to like. I just want to be able to live my life. I just want to be able to do the shit I want to do, which is like Ricky Rat. And like, you know, if I get sick or if like if something breaks down, I can comfortably fix that. You know what I mean? That's it. I don't give a shit. Like, I don't need to be fucking Jeff Bezos. I give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to do that much money. Right, <laughs> you know? right. So, yeah. I, I just realized we totally um, kind of skipped over talking about the fact that you had been doing comics this whole time. Yeah, it's been fun. So, how did, where did, has it always been the rat? Yeah, I mean, he was more of a mouse when I was a kid. Okay. You know, I, don't know, I had a, he was like a superhero. It was like a mad mouse, and he had a uh, co-superhero. It wasn't a sidekick, it was like a co-superhero. Okay. Rad Rabbit. Okay. And it was pretty cool. Uh, I, got, I still got one of the copies. Uh, pretty much in, like, one of the Marin towns, they, the, the premise was uh, they stopped selling snacks foods. And so, like, uh, mad, mad Mouse wasn't down for that, so he's trying to get the snack foods back in Marin. Yes. And, uh, you know, he, like, goes down the ladder. You know, I a lot of crap. And he goes down the ladder, and he finds out it's this kid named... Uh, Mo, who's like a snail, and he's like, I'm the one who's trying to get rid of the salty snacks because you know my parents were killed by salty snacks because it's a snail, you know, right, and, right. You know and then they, you know, squash the beef and all that kind of crap. But that was like the very first Ricky Rat story was Mad Mouse and Rat Rabbit. Take you on, still like, have Mo. it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I still got it. So, are these in like zine form or like, yeah, yeah, just like computer paper, get a stapler, just staple that shit, you know, then you pencil and then you ink, you know. So, once again, my, so my dad was a cartoonist, he like showed me very early on, like, this is what you do, this is how you draw it, this is you pencil it, then you draw it, you know, do ink and all that kind of shit, you know. Um, that was cool. I've been doing that like. You know, but the biggest one I was telling you before is the drawing wars. You yes. at a restaurant, you got that paper place mat. Yes. You just draw one thing, you know, like a stick figure, like giving you the middle finger, like, fuck you. And then you draw, you know, like a tank coming in, being like, fuck you. And you shoot it, and then I draw, like, you know, a big ass rabbit, like, farting on the tank. And it doesn't really matter. No one really wins. But at the end of the, the game, you end up with this beautiful place mat, just full of all these different drawings, like, basically attacking each other. But, you know, that, that was, like, the main <laughs> thing I did growing up. At least my dad, and, like, I brought that shit to my friends and shit. So we used to always fuck around with that shit. It was hell fun, you know? You do the wars with your dad, or? Yeah, originally my dad made that shit up. So when okay. I was a little kid, you know, he'd be like bored, be like, oh, I'm with a four year old. The hell am I talking to him about? Okay, here you go. Awesome. And, you know, that's how it started. And then, you know, as I got older, I'm like, yo, guys, we got to do this. And they liked it too. And it was fun, you know? So you've so, pretty much been drawing and doing comics as long as you can remember? Yeah, or? yeah. But, like, never, like, seriously, like, being like, oh, I'm a cartoonist or I'm a comic. I was just kind of like, you know, yeah. I'm like, some shit I just like do because it's kind of fun, you know? Right, right. So, you know, it was cool. Like, it wasn't until like somewhat recently I've been like identifying as a cartoonist, you know? Okay. Or even a street artist for that fucking matter, you know? Okay. We kind of left off at you being like 
you're like the t you had that tech job and you're like I'm out. Yeah. Is there anything between then and and Oh, like odd jobs and shit. Okay. Like I was fucking I was going like up north like weed farms and fucking building greenhouses and like trimming and shit. Okay. Um mortgage industry. You know, I did the mortgage industry before tech. I did mortgage industry a little bit after too. Um just, you know, being a fucking phone jockey just mm. slamming the phone, you know. Um just, you know, just trying to make some fucking money, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but not fulfilled, yeah. not fulfilling. No, not not at all. And, like, some, a lot of people in this country get their rocks off, and it's just like, cool, like, I made the absolute fucking most money I can. It's like, dope, dude, you spend 80 hours a week ignoring your family. Like, is it worth it? <laughs> like, you know, like, that doesn't sound cool. Like, right. to me, it's insecurity. But, you know, as long yeah. as you're, like, living, as long as you can pay for your shit, and, like, you're cool, like, who gives a fuck, you know? I don't know. So, I don't know. I, just, I had a long look in the mirror. I'm like, I don't know if sales is for me. I like talking to people, but I don't want to... I want to convince you to do some shit you want to do. If you want to fucking do it, who gives a shit? I don't want to fucking do it either. You know? Right on. <laughs> so, yeah, it wasn't for me. But on the flip side of that, too, met some good people in there. There are, you know, there are cool folks and all that kind of shit, you know? And there are a lot of actually, like, Bay Area natives who are in it as well, like right. San Francisco, even Eastman, all that other kind of shit, you know? Because yeah. once again, you know, it's, it's like my grandparents lived in Detroit. The job there was working at cars. That was it. It was the car industry. Mm -hmm. it's the same thing with here. This is the tech industry. Where the, the fuck are the jobs, you know? Mm -hmm. But we'll see what it's like in the future, you know? Yeah. Are we, if we're, if we're telling a, a chronological story, are, are we at the pandemic now? Or where, where are we? Yeah, yeah. So, all right, all right, all right. So, like, I'm, like, I'm uh, on my couch surfing. I'm living, like, my relative's house. my mom's house and the Marin and, you know, relative's house in the city and stuff. So, I'm going over that bridge, going to get a bridge all the fucking time, you know? And, uh, yeah, you know, I just got kind of bored. All these uh, stores had a bunch of plywood boards up. I saw... Uh, a character who I know locals don't like and I'm like you know what I'm just gonna clown on this character because it's quite fun and I'm bringing my drawing war background up to you know the forefront of street art and uh you know just like fuck it let's just see what happens like I have nothing to lose I don't give a <laughs> fuck you know and so did it you know got a mixed reaction hell of people were like cool for you hell of people were like fuck you I'm gonna kill you you know and mixed bag I'm like I don't give a fuck you know what I mean like fuck you I've been dead for years inside <laughs> death, death threats is when you know you made it right? yeah like, I, don't, I mean it's always like from some fucking, like, dude who probably makes, you know, fucking more money than, like, a developing country's GDP. So it's right. like, all right, what are you going to do, bro? You know, I don't right. give a fuck. <laughs> you know, run me over the Range Rover. Had you, um, b before that point, had you done anything public like that? Like, you'd, you'd done comic books, but had you done... I mean, yeah, just as, like, a high school art. kid, I was just, like, a little douchebag, like, a uh, tagger, just fucking, like, you know, tagging over shit, just be a fucking asshole um, mm -hmm. not to say taggers are assholes or not i actually really like it but you were doing it to be an i asshole. was just doing it to be an asshole <laughs> but like most taggers are hella cool like right. i don't know like when i see like one of my pieces and they get tagged and people are like oh aren't you pissed forever i'm like honestly i'm not because yeah. it shows me that the city's active yeah there's still a pulse there's still folks here that's still happening they're not completely gone you know and what it's i mean kind of like those little placemat wars you're having exactly a, it's like I don't, I don't give a crap like i don't know it's just it's active i'm glad yeah. to see my city act i'm glad to see folks out there doing it you know because that's the problem is everybody, you know, like all the great artists from San Francisco are kind of unfortunately, like, you know, at one point leave. Right. They got to, you know, right, and right. so anything to keep the culture alive, you know. Had you done anything besides tagging, though? Like any, no, anything not, close to what you're doing now? No, not at all. Not at yeah. all. Um, I just started like, sorry, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So I was doing the comic books. I was just chilling. I wasn't really doing any graffiti more. Because once I turned 18, I was like, I had a little scare of the law. So I'm like, fuck, because Marine cops don't give a fuck. They'll fuck you to the full extent, you know. Okay. So I. I Kind of got screwed there, and I'm like, I'm never doing this again. This is stupid as hell. And, you know, 10 years go by, I guess I forget. And, uh, you know, once again, it's just like I felt compelled. I felt like I had to do something. I felt like I wanted to, you know, stand up for a population that feels like it's been, like, you know, not heard from a long right. time, you know. And so, right, like, right. you know, once again, dude, it's just, it's just fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's just fun. I enjoyed it. And know? how did the uh, – can you say where the first one was, and, and how did that go? Shit. Okay. Like the first one was like before the pandemic. It was probably like a year before the pandemic. Me and my, okay. bu me and my buddy who grew up in Rhythm, he's uh, half El Salvadorian, half white. His dad's from the mission. So, like, you know, me and him were held close in that sense. And we went out. We just got super drunk. We're just drinking and smoking weed and shit and fucking walking around Chinatown and other places and putting up Ricky Rats. Okay. Probably like six total. Didn't last. It went down quick. I'm like, fuck it. I don't care. I'm going to stick to the cartoons, you know? All in Chinatown? Yeah, I got know. We did like a huge lap. We like started the mission, then we jumped on Bar. We're down like Market Street and like Soma, and then we like went up to like you know North Beach, and then like through Chinatown Grant, you know, and then, and then came back to the mission. Finally, like, you walked the tunnel through there, you know. And okay. The whole time, once we're fucked up, you know, so yeah. we're just you know walking the whole night. It's fun, but um, nothing really came of it, you know. I was like, you know, what? I don't give a shit. Like I'm just gonna stick to my cartoons because once again, I just love cartoons. And uh, yeah, so then once the pandemic hit, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do it again. And uh, you know, he's been with me again a few times doing it, but it's mostly been me, you know, by myself. But. Hell fun. <laughs> and what about the first? Um, oh, the first Ricky. The first Ricky you put up uh, contra that artist. 
Yeah. Mentioned. Uh, shit. Okay, like the first one is fucking. First one. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. The first one's in Cool Valley. Okay. And it was uh, I don't know. He does the same fucking shit every time. So I'm gonna tell you what it does. You know, it's like it's yeah. either the, it's either the gold one or the gay flag one. By the way, it's not gay. So why the fuck are you rapping that? Anywho, um, it was Ricky Rap pointing like towards his direction, being like, "The Midwest is that way, bro." Because like I knew he's from like St. Louis or some shit. Because once again, San Francisco is hell small, and it's like ignorant. And it's 2020. So you're ignorant to think that. They don't know who you are, and you're going to think that they don't, you know, you know what I mean? Like, right, we all, right. We all know. We all yeah. know. He has a small circle. I know his friends. He knows my friends. We all, I, I guarantee he knows fuck anything about him. I guarantee it, you know? Yeah. And I know about him, you know? So I did that. Did it have the caption? Was it had it just the caption. It wasn't and, that way, bro. Yeah, okay. No one was really sure of it or whatever, anything like that. And so finally, I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to the marina, which I fucking hate because I feel like I get to be six foot to enter any bar. <laughs> and so fucking, I go to the marina, and he's got like, you know, it's plastered there. So I'm like, yeah. all right, bro, I'm just going to have hella fun with this. So I did one that's like, where are you from, honey? Another one was like, he's running giants. So I was like, yeah, you're a fake ass fan, dude. You never even seen Barry Bonds swing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I used to fucking love Barry, you know? And it's just like, I just was like doing shit like that. And, you know, yeah, so, like, I, it's really sad, too, because, like, I don't really like the marina, but, like, that's, like, where it really started. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's because that's where it was, you know? Yeah. And then, like, it kind of evolved to the Fillmore Street, you know, like, Lower Pack Heights kind of area, like, you know, mm-hmm. pretty bougie or whatever. And I was I was there fucking around, and it was kind of funny, though, because I noticed the marina, the marina bros liked it. They're like, you know, like, Marie was come up to me, like, oh, look it. I'm like, I'm kind of making fun of you, but cool, thank you. You know, it's yeah. dope, you know? Yeah. And then I go to the Fillmore, and they hated it. They huh. still hate it. It's huh. hell. I, got, I get so much bitter. Uh, and I'm a fucking troll, dude, so I love that shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, the more hate you give me, the more I fucking grow, you yeah. know? So <laughs> so I was just like, I go to Fillmore all the time just to see the haters, like, you know? Right. All right, sorry. This is, this is a woman named Leah Kohler. Respect the fuck out of her. I still do, even after all the shit she's done. I still respect her. And so, anyways, if you have a daughter, this is like who you want your daughter to grow up to be, right? She's like a white woman from like Minnesota or some shit. She's like 37, 30 years, some shit. But I went to college to do my homework, and she like came out here. She like blew up off of like making the biggest podcast app or some shit. Made hella dough, hella guap and all that shit, right? And she bought one of the painted ladies, right? And she was gonna Instagram the whole uh, fixing of it and like make it look as original prestige. And I was fucking stoked on that shit. I was like, this is cool as fuck. Like, it's not gentrifying because no one lives in the fucking pink lady. It's not like she's kicking out an old lady who's lived there for like five fucking decades. You know what I mean? Like, she's actually doing San Francisco a favor. She's fixing a fucking landmark. Right, landmark. Yeah, yeah. Like, right, right. So I was stoked on it. And um, I noticed on Fillmore Street, some of my rats, like, uh, voice bubbles or speech bubbles were changed. And, you know, San Francisco, once again, man, it's a small-ass fucking town, small people and shit. They told me they saw fucking, like, a Tesla roll up, and, like, it was, it was, it was Finch and Leah Culver. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, why are they working together? And I did my homework, and I'm like, damn, they're together. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just, you know, then, like, it just... He's never done anything really to me. He's always been like some weird pass aggressive liberal shit. It's always been her though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, she comes yeah. in, she gets hella funny, she gets all stuff. So I made a comic strip about her too. It was hella funny. <laughs> about like Ricky Rag going to the pink lady lady's house, being like, oh yeah, I'm so glad you dumped that loser and you got our like, real motherfucker here. Like, you know, like <laughs> here you have some folks from the mission come through. I'll be like Modelo and Blunts, you know? Like, <laughs> I'm just a troll, dude. I'm just a fucking troll, you know? I'm just, it's all. Oh my you know, god! It's, it's only personal. It's just fun. You know? No, exactly. That's yeah. It's just ribbing. <laughs> it's ribbing. You know, it's, pu- but it's, it's public ribbing. But it's, it's fine. I get like I don't know. I just she wanted to defend her man. Yeah, I sure. Res- I respect that. But you know, you get, you can't get in the lane and not expect some fucking heat. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I want to end with a couple of things. I want to hear what are some of your favorite Ricky rats that are that are out in public. I mean, Ricky Rats don't really have a long lifespan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, people, yeah. I got all different types of haters, so, you know, yeah. it, it comes from many different directions, many different motivations, all that kind of shit. But I don't know. I mean, one of my favorites is the car on the fly bar for a while. You know, it was the Permit Patty and Barbecue Becky. You know, there are phones and Ricky's. There's a bunch of Ricky's, like, getting drunk and high and shit. And then there's one Ricky talking to him, being like, you know, yeah, well, fuck, what did he say? It's like, oh, yeah, go ahead, Karen, call the cops. You know, that was hella yeah. fun. I did enjoy trolling the Honey Bear. That was hella fun, you know, because uh-huh. I just felt like, San Francisco needed it, yeah. and like I needed it, and like yeah. I just thought it was hella fun to do. So that was like a lot. Every single one's my favorite, dude. They're all yeah. hella fun. Once yeah. again, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't fun, you yeah. know. So it's all fun. Yeah. And it's like, oh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of artists coming up the city, and it's super cool to see. It's like it's growing. A lot of artists coming out. Some people would be like, yo, I saw your Ricky Rash shit. Maybe want to come out and be a street artist. I'm like, fuck yeah, you know, that's cool. I'm totally down to collab. I'm totally get on it. Cause like at the end of the day, I don't give a fuck if you're from here or not. I don't care if you're white or black or gay or straight. Any of that shit, I don't care. My main question about you is, if you're an artist or you're a creator in this area, are you positively contributing to this culture? Yes or no? And you know, I'm not like the fucking overlooker of like what's cool or what's not. But at the end of the day, I got my own motherfucking opinion. I can say my own goddamn opinion too. You know, and to me, if you're not positively contributing to the culture, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know. <laughs> you know, 
Awesome. Which a lot, I guess, Barry people don't like directness. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Man, I just want, I just want the city to like, not even just the city, the whole Bay Area. You know, it's just like we used to have this like cool like artist rep. You know, like, we were like trailblazers. We were like, you know, we we're just always like we were always leading the pack. You know what I mean? We were always doing something new. We were like pushing the boundaries and shit. Even even in tech, in that sense too. Even tech was pushing the fucking boundaries. You know, they're creating new apps and shit. You know what I mean? So, I want that to stay in the sense that we're 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 progressing. We're creating. We're stacking on top of the old shit. We're not fucking you know disintegrating. I don't know. I just want. Maybe Bay Area Artie again. <laughs> Just I like that. that. That's what I want. <laughs> that was Ricky Rat. On the next episode of Storied San Francisco, we'll meet San Francisco polo player Dale Johnson. Join us for episode 37 next week. And don't forget to tune in to Real City Ambassadors at noon this Sunday. Music for Storied San Francisco is by Otis McDonald. Photography is by Michelle Kilfeather. The show is hosted and produced by me. Michelle and I have produced more than 130 episodes over the last three years, and you can find them all at our website, storiedsf.com. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, where you can like, comment, and share the stuff we put out. Find the podcast just about everywhere you can listen, including, most recently, BFF.FM's new podcast network. Please subscribe to stay up to date on all the content we publish. We love feedback, so if you have any, our email is storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks so much for listening. Stay strong, stay safe, and stay healthy. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcasts.bff.fm. BFF.fm, best frequencies forever.